In this and the next lecture, I will teach the transformer model. Transformer is based on attention. Attention was originally a technique for improving RNs, but attention can be applied alone without RNs. In the first part, let's build an attention layer without RN. Transformer model is relatively new. It's two years after the attention paper and one year after self-attention. It's published in NIPS 2017. The title is Attention is All You Need. It is now a consensus that transformer is consistently better than RN with attention. In this lecture, I explain the transformer model. I cannot go to every detail because transformer is too sophisticated. I will focus on the most important components. Transformer is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. It has an encoder and a decoder. But transformer is not RN. There is no recurrence. It is purely based on attention and dense layers. Transformer is the state of the art for most NLP tasks. Transformer is consistently more accurate than LSTM. Now I tell you that you can remove RNs while keeping attention. Yet the attention-based neural network can do whatever RNs can do. Then how would you design such a new network? In this lecture, let's design an attention-based new network from scratch. Let's first revisit attention for RN, and then remove RN while keeping attention. We will build attention and self-attention layers that can do whatever a recurrent layer can do. In the next lecture, we will use attention layers and dense layers to build a powerful model which is known as Transformer. Previously, we have learned attention for sequence-to-sequence -sequence models. A sequence-to-sequence -sequence model has an encoder network and a decoder network. The encoder network takes vectors x1 to xm as inputs. The information of the x vectors is compressed into the states. The last state, hm, is a summary of the entire input sequence x1 to xm. hm becomes the initial state of the decoder. Denote the initial state of the decoder by s0. s0 is equal to hm. This is the decoder network. It acts as a text generator. In each step, it takes a word vector as input updates its state s, and then generates the next word based on the new state s. The newly generated word becomes the next input. If attention is used, then we need to compute a context vector each time after we update the state. To compute the new context vector c, we compare the decoder state as j with all the states in the encoder to find how well they are aligned. Denote the scores by alphas. They are the weights used in computing the context vectors. Here, subscripts 1 to m are the indices of the encoder states h1 to hm. The subscript j is the index of the decoder state sj. Each weight alpha is associated with an h vector. We have a function called a line that compares hi and sj. Alpha ij is the output scalar. Alpha ij measures how well hi and sj are aligned. A big alpha ij means hi and sj are strongly correlated. Suppose the encoder has m states, h1 to hm. Then the number of alphas is also m. Each alpha is associated with a state h. Let's look into the align function. The align function takes vectors hi and sj as inputs and outputs a scalar alpha ij.
The function is implemented in this way. Apply hi to matrix wk. Denote the product by vector ki. Here, wk is a parameter matrix. It is randomly initialized and then learned from training data. The encoder Rn has m states h1 to hm. We apply the linear function to each of the vectors h1 to hm. h1 and hm are mapped to vectors k1 to km. Organize vectors k1 to km as a matrix. Denote the matrix by big K. It will be used soon. As G is an input of the align function. Apply as G to matrix WQ. Denote the product by vector QJ. WQ is also a parameter matrix to be learned from training data. With matrix K and vector QJ, we can compute the weights alphas using this equation. The product of K transpose and QJ is an m-dimensional vector. Then we apply softmax function to the resulting vector. The output of softmax function is an m-dimensional vector. Denote the vector by alpha j. This figure shows how the weights are computed. Vector alpha j has m elements. The m elements are the m weights. This matrix is k transpose. It has m rows. Each row is a transformation of a state vector h. This vector is qj. The product of k transpose and qj is an m-dimensional vector. That is why the output vector alpha j is m-dimensional. We have computed vectors q and k using the linear maps. In transformer, q is called query. Query means using q to match the encoder states. Vector k is called key. Key means it is to be matched. Then, apply hi to matrix wv. Denote the product by vector vi. Vector v is called value. Context vector c is computed by weighted averaging vectors v1 to vm. The matrices WQ, WK, and WV are the parameter matrices in attention. They are to be learned from training data. I have elaborated on the query, key, and value vectors. Now I give a more intuitive explanation. The figure is the Rn sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. As J is a decoder's current state. We map as j to the query vector qj using this equation. I have described this equation a moment ago. The encoder has m states h1 to hm. Map them to key vectors using this equation. Stack the m key vectors to form matrix big K. We use this equation to compute the M weights. The weights depend on matrix big K and the vector QJ. We got M weights alpha 1J to alpha MJ. Each alpha corresponds to a state vector H. Next, apply the linear map to all the encoder states H. Encoder state vector hi is mapped to 
value vi. In this way, we obtained m value vectors v1 to vm. To this end, we have obtained m weights alpha 1j to alpha mj. We have also obtained the value vectors v1 to vm. The weighted average of the value vectors is the new context vector. The new context vector is computed by this equation. Cj is equal to the sum of alpha 1j v1 to alpha mj vm. To this end, we have computed a new context vector. Attention was originally developed for improving RNs. But can we remove RNs while keeping only attention? In the original attention paper, attention was built upon RNs. But it turns out that attention can work very well without RNs. In fact, attention alone can beat RNs. The basic idea of transformer is using attention without recurrence units. Let's design an attention layer and use it for sequence to sequence. Let's build an attention layer. We start a sequence to sequence model, which has an encoder and a decoder. Encoder's inputs are vectors x1, x2 to xm. Decoder's inputs are vectors x prime 1, x prime 2 to x prime t. For example, the task is to translate English to German. An English sentence has m words, which are embedded into m vectors, x1 to xm. The decoder generates German words one by one. A generated word becomes the next input. The decoder stops working when the generated word is the stop sign. In this way, the decoder generates a German sentence. The encoder does not use Rn to build state vectors h. Instead, the encoder maps every input vector xi to ki and vi using the two linear functions. ki is called key, and vi is called value. In this way, x1 is mapped to k1 and v1. x2 is mapped to k2 and v2, so on and so forth. We got m key vectors and m value vectors. Let x prime 1, x prime 2 to x prime t be the current inputs of the decoder. This equation maps every x prime to a query vector q. The decoder has t input vectors x prime 1, x prime 2 to x prime t. They are mapped to t query vectors. x prime 1 is mapped to q1. x prime 2 is mapped to q2, so on and so forth. There are a total of three parameter matrices. Two are in the encoder. They are wk and wv. One is in the decoder. It is wq. Having the query vectors and the key vectors at hand, we are ready to compute the weights alphas. Alpha 1 is an m-dimensional vector. It contains the weights. It is a function of the key vectors k1 to km and the first query vector q1. The elements of alpha 1 matters how well the query vector q1 is aligned with the m key vectors k1 to km. Alpha 1 is computed using this equation. 
multiply matrix BK transpose and vector Q1, and then apply the softmax function. The result is an m-dimensional vector. Now we are ready to compute the contact vector C. C1 is a function of the weight vector alpha1 and the value vectors v1 to vm. C1 is a weighted average of the value vectors v1 to vm. The weights are the alphas. This can be equivalently written as a matrix vector multiplication. Matrix big V is made of the m value vectors v1 to vm. Each value vector v is a column of the matrix big V. Vector c1 is equal to big V times vector alpha1. We do the same to compute the second weight vector alpha2. It is a function of q2 and all the key vectors k1 to km. Then compute the second context vector c2. c2 is a function of the weight vector alpha2 and the value vector v1 to vm. c2 is a weighted average of the value vectors. The weights are the m elements of alpha2. We can repeat this process to compute all the weights alphas and the context vectors c's. c1 is at the position of x prime 1. c2 is at the position of x prime 2, and so on. The t context vectors c1 to ct are the outputs of the attention layer. If the decoder's input is a sequence of t vectors, then the output of the attention layer has a length of t as well. Recall that context vector cj is computed using this equation. cj is equal to v times softmax of k transpose times qj. To compute a single context vector cj, we need to use all the key vectors, all the value vectors, and a single query vector qj. For example, c2 depends on the query vector q2 and all the key and value vectors. Therefore, Cj depends on the decoder's jth input x prime j and all the encoder's inputs x1 to xm. For example, C3 depends on the decoder's input x prime 3 and the encoder's inputs x1 to xm. Suppose we use such a model for translating English to German x1 to xm correspond to m English words to translate. The decoder generates German words one by one. For example, c2 is the newly computed context vector. c2 is the input of the softmax classifier. The softmax classifier outputs vector p2. p2 is a probability distribution over the German vocabulary. Note that C2 knows the entire English sequence by looking at all the M key and value vectors. C2 knows also the previous word in the German sentence. In sum, a context vector C knows the entire English sentence. And in the German sentence, it knows only the previous word. Intuitively speaking, the model needs to know all the previous German words to generate the next German word. But the context vector C knows only the previous German word. This is insufficient. Using only attention layer is not enough. 
Later on, we will build self-attention so that the context vector C knows the entire German sentence. Let's come back to the translation. We have computed vector P2. It is a probability distribution over the German vocabulary. We randomly sample a German word according to the probability distribution P2. Let x prime 3 be the embedding of the selected German word. If you are familiar with Rn sequence-to-sequence -sequence models, then you should have noticed the similarity. Whatever an Rn sequence-to-sequence -sequence model can do, the attention layer can do the same. The attention layer can perform machine translation in the same way as the Rn sequence-to-sequence -sequence models. Therefore, attention alone can do the job. Rn is unnecessary. We can remove Rn while keeping attention. To this end, we have built an attention layer. Denote the attention layer by this function, attn. The inputs are the matrices x and x prime. Matrix x contains all the m input vectors of the encoder, that is, the English words. Matrix x prime contains all the t input vectors of the decoder, that is, the generated German words. The layer has three parameter matrices, wq, wk, and wv. They will be learned from training data. The outputs are the context vectors, c1 to ct. t is determined by the length of the decoder's input sequence. The figure illustrates the attention layer. It is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. It takes the two sequences as inputs. x1 to xm denote the source language to translate, that is, an English sentence. x1 to x1t denote the target language sequence, that is, the generated German words. The output of the attention layer is a sequence of context vectors, c1 to ct. Every C vector is at the position of an X prime vector in the decoder. In the beginning, we have studied the Rn sequence-to-sequence -sequence model. Then we removed the Rn while keeping attention. We have built an attention layer that can be used for machine translation. Next, let's build a self-attention layer in a similar way. The self-attention layer can replace an Rn. This is the attention layer we built. It takes as inputs x and x prime, and outputs a sequence of context vectors c1 to ct. Attention is for sequence to sequence. The attention layer takes as inputs the two sequences. The left is the source language to translate, and the right is the target language. In the previous lecture, we have learned self-attention. Self-attention is not limited to sequence to sequence. Self-attention has only one input sequence, x1 to xm. They are mapped to an output sequence, the context vectors c1 to cm. The input sequence and the output sequence both have a length of m. A context vector, ci, is in the position of xi. For example, c2 is in the position of x2, but it doesn't mean c2 depends on only x2. In fact, c2 depends on all the x vectors. A change of any of the x vectors would make c2 different. Denote self-attention by also the ATTN function. The function is the same as the attention layer we built previously. The difference is in the inputs. Here, both of the inputs are x. That is why this is known as self-attention. Self-attention is very similar to attention. The only difference is in the inputs.
but I like to build a self-attention layer from scratch so that you will fully understand self-attention. The input is a sequence of vectors x1 to xm. The first step is to map every input vector xi to the triplet qi, ki, and vi. They are computed using the three linear functions. qi is called query, ki is called key, and vi is called value. wq, wk, and wv are parameter matrices to be learned from data. x1 is mapped to q1, k1, v1. x2 is mapped to q2, k2, v2. So on and so forth. Each x is mapped to the triplet q, k, and v. Now we are ready to compute the weights alphas. Alpha is computed by the same equation as before. Look at the figure. We use the first query vector q1 and all the key vectors to compute the first weight vector alpha1. Similarly, we use the second query vector q2 and all the key vectors to compute the second weight vector alpha2. All the weight vectors alpha1 to alpha m are computed in the same way. We computed a total of m weight vectors. Each alpha is in the position of an input vector x. Now we are ready to compute the context vectors c's. A context vector c is a weighted sum of the value vectors v1 to vm. Different context vectors use different weights. The first context vector c1 uses the first weight vector alpha1. Taking the weighted sum of the value vectors v1 to vm, we get the first context vector c1. Similarly, we take the weighted sum of the value vectors v1 to vm to compute c2. The weights are elements of the weight vector alpha2. The result of the weighted sum is the second context vector c2. We can analogously compute all the m context vectors c1 to cm using the weight vectors alphas and the value vectors v's. The m context vectors c1 to cm are the outputs of the self-attention layer. Recall this equation. The jth context vector cj is computed in this way. cj is equal to v times soft max of k transpose times qj. This part computes the weight vector alpha. The product of matrix big V and the weight vector is a weighted average of the value vectors. Note that a context vector, for example C2, depends on all the key vectors and value vectors. C2, therefore, depends on all the inputs x1 to xm. While C2 is in the position of x2, C2 is influenced by all the m vectors x1 to xm. To this end, we have built an attention layer and a self-attention layer. The attention layer is represented by the function attn. For self-attention, the two inputs of the function are both x. The layer has three parameter matrices, wq, wk, and wv. The figure represents a self-attention layer. The self-attention layer maps the input sequence x1 to xm to a sequence of context vectors c1 to cm. While a context vector, for example c2, is in the position of x2, c2 is influenced by all the m input vectors x1 to xm. I have finished teaching attention and the self-attention layers.
Finally, let me summarize this lecture. The first attention paper was published in 2015. Attention was originally developed for sequence-to-sequence -sequence RN models, especially for improving machine translation. Then, the 2016 paper showed that attention can be applied to improve all the RN models. Attention is not limited to sequence-to-sequence -to -sequence models. The proposed method is called self-attention. The 2017 paper figured out that attention alone is good enough. We can completely remove RNs while keeping attentions. Removing RNs can actually make the performance better. The resulting model is called transformer. In this lecture, we have learned how to build an attention layer and a self-attention layer. I don't want to explain all the components of transformer one by one. Instead, I hope you know how to design a transformer model from scratch. We began with RN sequence to sequence. Then we eliminated RNs while keeping attentions. We built attention and self-attention layers that can do all the tasks that RNs can do. We have built an attention layer. It is for sequence to sequence. It takes the two sequences as inputs. It outputs C1 to CT. Every C vector is in the position of an X prime vector in the decoder. We can use the last context vector CT for predicting the next word. The next word then becomes a new X prime vector in the decoder. This figure shows a self-attention layer. It has only one input sequence, x1 to xm. Self-attention layer outputs a sequence of context vectors, c1 to cm. Self-attention and rn have the same input shape and the same output shape. They both convert a sequence of input vectors to a sequence of output vectors. The context vectors C's here are like the state vectors H's in Rn. So a self-attention layer can do whatever a recurrent layer can do. Self-attention can replace Rn's. Thank you for watching this lecture. To this end, we have built attention and self-attention layers. In the next lecture, we will use the two kinds of layers and the dense layers to build a deep new network which is well known as transformer.